What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create this really cool halftone scrapbook collage effect. I think it looked pretty nice, pretty unique, so that's what we're going to be going over together in this video. Without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. Alright, so this is the clip that we're going to use. It is from a Molly Santana music video. I thought the video looked really cool, some really creative shots in there. So the first step to our effect is going to be rotoscoping out our character. There are so many videos on this. If you don't know how, no shame in it, just look up any tutorial. So as you can see, I already have it rotoscoped out right here. The first effect we're going to slap on there is the Sapphire Halftone effect. I usually try to keep all of my tutorials plugin free. This one is an exception because it's such an incredible effect. It comes from the Sapphire suite if you want to get that. So we have the Sapphire Halftone effect pulled up. All you got to do is increase the dot frequency right here until we get a cool halftone scrapbook effect that we like. I think this looks pretty cool. Also, I forgot to tell you when you have this rotoscoped out, Make sure that you duplicate it, come in D, and then the layer below. We're just gonna remove the half tone one and also the roto brush so that way we still get our background right here. Real quick before we go on with this video, I need to put you on to our brand new bundle, which is the Ultimate Brain Rot Bundle. With over 60 presets, the Ultimate Brain Rot Bundle allows you to get those brain rot, those distortion edits, all in a matter of seconds. It's literally just a drag and drop process. So if you've been meaning to get into those Che edits, those distortion edits, I really recommend it. I'll leave the link in the description also with a discount just for sticking around and supporting the channel now let's get right back into the tutorial so we're gonna rename this call it background and this one roto all right so now that this is done we're gonna stylize our character even more we're gonna add a stroke to it with a drop shadow so how we're gonna do this is we're gonna right click on this layer right here and we're gonna go over to layer styles and we're gonna do stroke. So now, as you can see, it added a white stroke over here. You can go to layer styles right here if you wanna change the color or anything like that. I think I'm gonna increase the stroke a little, something like five looks good. So now we have this. And we're gonna add a drop shadow as well. We're gonna do that by also right clicking, layer styles, drop shadow and then you're gonna have a drop shadow. We can increase the distance a bit. There we go. And the size, you can even add some noise. I didn't even know about that feature. That's pretty nice, 15%. Yeah, let's try that, pretty cool. Now the next step, we're gonna create an adjustment layer in which we're gonna put the polarized time effect that's gonna allow us to get that choppy eight frames per second effect. It's very similar to those like scrapbook paper effects. Let's get into it. All right, so now let's create the adjustment layer. Let's do right click, new adjustment layer, and we're gonna drag on the posterized time effect. And let's make it eight frames per second. So now it's gonna have that choppy style. Let's look at what that looks like. Super cool. Now the next step is we're gonna create our stylized background. As you can see in the preview, you have this really cool grid effect and also this moving object. Let's get into it. All right, so now we're gonna do Command Y to create a new solid. That is the color that I'm gonna use. A pretty cool purple color, but you can of course choose the color that you want. We're gonna call this background and we're gonna put it under the roto one. All to get our grid effect, we're gonna go over to FX and presets and type grid. Now, as you can see, we get this grid effect, but we totally lost or color that we wanted that is totally fine we're just gonna go to blending mode and then change it from none to screen there we go and then this that says size from we're gonna change it from corner point to width slider now we can increase it to something we like i think 70 looks pretty cool now let's look at what we have as you can see, we're getting somewhere, but it's pretty stagnant. I'm gonna show you how you can sauce it up and add some movement to the grid. We're gonna go over to the anchor right here. So as you can see, when I move this, the grid moves. So we're gonna do Alt click on there and we're gonna randomize the anchor movement. Let's do Alt click and then we're gonna type wiggle parenthesis 24. This is the amount of times per second it's gonna move, comma. And then after the comma, it is how much it's gonna move. So let's do something like thousand. That way it's really gonna seem random. And now we should have a movement to our background. Let's look at it. super fire now the next step as i said earlier is we're gonna create this star looking shape that is gonna move in the background and rotate it's really gonna add some depth add to our scene let's get it we're gonna go over to the rectangle right here and select the star tool and then we're gonna click and drag to create our shape now i already have it set up basically you can do down arrow and up arrow to choose the amount of segments you want in that shape so i think i'm gonna do Maybe like something 
something like this. If you want a star, you can do that as well. But I just want a shape that is gonna look nice in the background. So I think something like that will do. Yeah. That one's pretty cool. So we're gonna put the shape under the roto layer. We're gonna rename it star, just so that we differentiate our layers. And then we're gonna add a drop shadow to it to add some depth. Let's go to drop shadow, drag it onto our layer. We're gonna increase the distance right here. Yeah, that's really nice. So now we have this. Pretty nice, but as you can see, there's no movement to it. We're gonna add some, let's get you can press R onto the layer to pull the rotation property. And we're gonna do Alt click once again on the stopwatch. And we're gonna type time, asterisk, and then let's do 100. And as you can see, the rotation is animated. Now we're gonna add a bit more depth to our scene by adding a vignette. Let me show you how to do that. We're gonna create another adjustment layer. We're gonna go to effects and presets and type CC vignette. I can actually just type vignette, then we're gonna drag it on and then we can increase the amount to something we like. I think something like 250 looks pretty cool. As you can see, we have a pretty cool result. I think we're gonna add some noise to it as well. It always looks nice. So let's type noise drag it on let's do something like 15 maybe and we're gonna uncheck use color noise let's just make sure that we put that under the adjustment layer that makes it choppy and now we should have this now our last step to really make this effect perfect as you can see we really got the effect down it looks pretty nice we're almost there all we got to do now is transition in the effect and out of the effect let's get into it all right, so as you can see, Molly Santana kind of just goes away at that moment. So I'm actually going to cut everything except, of course, the background clip right here. That's where it's going to be useful. So we're going to do Command Shift D and then delete all of these. That way, as you can see, we are back to our regular clip afterwards. And then one thing we can do as well is grab all of the layers and then we can get ahead a little bit. That way we can make the background clip go in the beginning. So now it's going to go into the effect. Now all we need is a smooth transition to go in and out. We're going to add a flash effect. Let's go. You just got to create an adjustment layer. Let's make it four frames long. And then we're going to grab the exposure effect. You can drag it on the adjustment layer. And then at the beginning, we're going to keyframe the exposure from zero. And then two frames in, in the middle, we're going to increase it to something like four. And then back to zero after two frames. So as you can see, we have this nice flash now. We can just duplicate that one, command D and put it at the end as well put it at the end as well now let's look at our final result so that was it for today thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video and if it brought you any value please consider subscribing i really appreciate it we're on our way to 6k so that was it for today thank you so much for watching so that was it for today thank you so much for sticking around until the end if you enjoyed this video and if it brought you any value please consider subscribing and please let me know in the comments as well what tutorials you would like to see next on this channel also if you want to keep learning some really cool effects you can watch this video right there it'll help you i'll see you in the next one peace